that's a pretty good chunk. All right, let's see if we can find some more fire opals. Day two. Yesterday was a good day. A lot of people were working in the pit. The Rogue Rockhound and I got to work several spots. Right here, we were having a little bit of luck. Found a massive boulder in this spot, making it pretty tough to work. And then over in this little cove, we were finding a lot of nice deep red opals. Unfortunately for us, this spot started developing some overburden. So we're gonna move today and we're gonna focus mainly on this spot and this spot over here. After talking with the owner, Jamie Lant, he said if you find clay, that's a really good thing. What you'll wanna do is follow it down until you hit a whitish cap. That's basically the top of the opal. From there, you'll expose as much of the area around it as possible. Be really careful with this because opal is fairly fragile and so big swings will crack it. We found out the hard way, unfortunately, by being impatient and we, we did crack quite a few trying to extract them. Okay, I've been working on this piece for a little while and uh, I got a chunk that's broke off here. A little bit. Looks like more of that white stuff, the uh, white crust though. Not super high quality. Are you, are you trying to see right there? Here's an example of that white cap I'm talking about. Uh, we discovered the uh, clay line above it, and so we were just following it down, and uh, eventually we ran into that. And then, of course, we dug around it and started exposing underneath it, and that's where we found the main opal. At this point, we thought we were just cleaning up, but it ended up uh, breaking open a piece that opened up another pocket. Hey, right, we got a chunk of it. Okay, so we're cracking off a piece right now. Unfortunately, it's busted already. But, you know, you can see right here how it doesn't have, I mean, it's it's the broken part, right? So it's not a clean, <clears throat> clean area as it is. Um, it keeps splitting apart and then going to a new vein so um, maybe we'll be able to get this big piece right here but you can see where it splits right there and so I think this is kind of the end of this you know if we get maybe behind here and if we come down and like chip some of this away we might be able to actually get a good piece in here but for the most part we're doing surgery now yeah it's like right here you can see it there's there's some right here too but it doesn't look like it's a whole lot and it's this whole split thing. So that's where I think we should just kind of do a little surgery. Get some of this host material out. Yep, just try and extract as big of a yeah, piece as possible. Just be careful. I mean, you know, you can't, you know, magic, so it's not gonna be perfect. If I had to offer any advice, it's take your time when you find the fire opal. It's a lot easier to get big chunks that way. All right, everybody, it's time for us to head back to the shop. We're gonna see how well this cuts and polishes. Hey everybody, it's shop day. We're gonna be cutting open some rocks and <laughs> doing some slabs and cabs. Cat <laughs> That's distracting us. <laughs> yeah, <that's supposed> to be. <laughs> hey everybody, it's shop day. Rogue Rockhound joined us, let's do this. We're gonna use a saw here to clean it up a bit before we switch over to the grinding wheel.
Okay, let's see how much of this I can preserve. Hopefully it's not a complete hack job because this is a beautiful piece. All right, not gonna lie. Feel like it was a little bit of a hack job. The problem I was having is there's a few impurities that were pretty deep, but we'll get this cleaned up in the grinding phase. When working opal, one of the things I was warned about is it's susceptible to heat fracturing, so you're gonna wanna use a lot of water. And after working a couple of pieces, I can say that's pretty accurate. I ended up chasing a couple of cracks. You can see right here, this is the tiny little cracks that you'll be fighting. Another thing I was warned about is opal has a high water content, so when it cures, it has a chance to craze, which is a type of cracking. I decided to run some tests on these guys, so I left them on a countertop that got some morning light. Um, so they got a fair amount of temperature fluctuation. And this is the result after one month. Uh, so far, I would say that this stuff is pretty stable. Um, you can see the large one right here. The only, only thing that I see going on with it is just um, floss, that there's, there's stuff on the inside, but no actual crazing. Same thing for that, that turned out pretty nice. And then this one also survived 100%. But if you look, this guy right here developed a crack. So we have verified that if you don't cure these slowly, that they absolutely can't crack. What was recommended to me is that you cure them in your closet because it's a nice, stable, cool environment, and it'll take somewhere around three to six months to properly cure. Thank you, everybody who joined us. I really appreciate all the people that like and subscribe. It's your support that keeps this channel going.